are so honored and privileged to be here together today. And uh, in the next about 35 minutes, you're going to get to hear stories of the wonderful uh, men who are coming up here, getting prepared right now, right behind me. And uh, you're going to get to have a vision for what we want for men to be leaders in their home and, and leaders in the local church. And what it looks like in an authentic way as we hear stories today. And so I can't wait. So as we get started, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna introduce uh, each of these people to you and a little bit about their family. And so first we've got Steve Moore and Steve Moore is here and he is married to Emily and they have a blended family. And so Steve has uh, two kids from his first marriage and that's Nick who is 28. He is married to Madison. They've been married for seven years. And then they've got a little guy, Holden, who is uh, 14 months old. And Nick is stationed right now in South, Car South Carolina, and he is in the Navy. And so can we give him a round of applause for his service? Thank you, Nick, for your service. And then he's got a son, Eric, who's 26, married for seven years, Anna, and they are here in Moorhead. And so we're excited uh, that they can be a part of today. And then Steve and Emily have two kids, CJ, who's 15, and Cassidy, who is 11. And then we've got Todd Troyer, and he is here going to share his story. He's married to Kelly. They've got three kids. They've got Taryn, who is 16, Zach, who is 15, and then uh, their adult son, Matt, who's living in Arizona, watching online, a part of today. He's married to Shay. They've got two kids, Graham and Miles. So let's give them a round of applause. <clears throat> then we got Brian Mackley, our good friend, and he's got two incredible little boys, Knox and Nolan. And so let's give him a round of applause. Okay, so uh, as you see, we're in camping chairs. Why did we choose camping chairs? We chose camping chairs because we're in a series uh, called Family Vacation, right? And when we go on family vacation or when we're just doing a staycation at our house, we take out our camping chairs and we sit around and we have conversation. And a lot of times, um, I know for me, sometimes when you get around a bonfire or you get in a circle of people or you start having conversation, you don't know where it's going to lead. And things come out of that conversation that you're like, wow, I'm really glad that we sat down and we sat in a circle and we decided to engage in a conversation. And so that's what we're going to do today. And we just know that God um, really has a story that he wants to share and connect with all of our lives today. And then our hope is that you too find time this summer with people that you love to get in a circle, to sit in a camping chair, to have conversation and real conversation about real things. Um, so that's our prayer. So Kyle and I, we're gonna jump in a little bit here and there, but our hope is that we stay pretty quiet <laughs> and you that's get to hear. Like is that the way, yeah, uh, you yeah, like yeah. to just be quiet, yep, don't you? That's what I prefer. <laughs> that is what you prefer. <laughs> Uh, and these wonderful men are going to share uh, their journey and their story. So to get us started, hey, Steve, will you just start by sharing um, what was life like for you kind of growing up and what was your relationship with God and church and kind of all that? Start there. Sure, Beth. I was raised in a traditional Christian household, uh, Methodist, and up until high school, you know, we, we attended church every week in Sunday school. And then um, when I was... 14, my sister passed away as a teenager of leukemia, and uh, that's when my parents drew closer to God, and I started to recede uh, from my relationship with God and uh, was absent from my life until recently, two years ago. So um, my dad was always the strength of our family and always provided that security and, um, you know, steadfastness that, that families need, but yes... Um, my journey away from God started early uh, because of that uh, situation with my so sister. When you, so when you lost your sister, and I'm so sorry for your loss, and how old were you? I was 14. You were 14. And that's, that's hard. And, and anyone who's navigated loss at that age, that's hard to navigate. And so you saw as your parents got closer to God, you actually drove away from God. I couldn't understand why my parents were walking towards God, I understand now, because how do you survive the loss of a child without God? I don't, I, I don't even know. Yeah. Um, but for me, it was, I couldn't understand why that happened. And we were doing everything right 
in my eyes, but it still happened. So that was my uh, departure. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a pivotal moment. Um, yeah, Todd, tell us a little bit about growing up for you. What was it? Yeah, what was it like? And um, again, I was I grew up in a Christian family, so okay. pretty lucky there. Um, and in historical, my, my the church I went to, um, growing up, my grandparents went to, my dad was raised in, you know, so he was, you know, very young. Met my mom. He always jokes around that he met her in the, in the nursery room. So they met at that age and went to church together their whole life. So from my perspective, very generational. You know, yeah. my grandpa, my grandparents, my parents, my wife and I got married in that church. You know, so very, you know, feel pretty fortunate. So, yeah. yeah. So God's been a part of your life. Forever. Throughout. Yeah, my fourth day on earth, I think my mom said she had to stop by. She was the pastor's secretary, so she had to stop by the office. And so she said, you were there half the day that, you know, your fourth day of life was in that church. So, <laughs> yeah. 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 And that's a powerful story. Yeah. That's a powerful story and a powerful legacy. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. Brian, tell us about you and kind of growing up. And Yeah, so I grew up in the Duluth area, uh, raised in a Christian home. Uh, Mom stayed home, took care of us. Dad worked for the railroad on the road most of, uh, most of his life for that, but we were adequately provided for. Uh, he did a great job. He taught me how to work hard. Um, when I was 18, I took about 10 years off from God. Uh, I moved to North Dakota. I didn't get involved with the church family or anything like that and uh, filled my time with things that uh, were not involved with church. So, yeah, I found my way back now and and that's my goal is to raise my boys in the church. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, and it's interesting, Brian, as we get into it, you know, there's, it's like a, there's a, a time of your life where you weave this way and then weave back, and I can relate with that. There's a time in my life where things were going this way and then I weave this way. And, um, and the power that God has, that even when we stir away, God's, he's doing everything to draw us back. He's doing everything he can to draw us back. Um, so talk a little bit about that, Steve. You alluded to it, but you said you walked away and then, and then you came back to Christ. Uh, when you were in your walking away days, talk about what that was like in your first marriage and parenting. And sure. Uh, when I look back, um, I'm just blessed. God must have been there because, you know, Eric's sitting over there. Uh, Eric and Nick are both uh, great young men uh, who are better men than I am. And... Uh, uh, you my can sit in that. Son Nick is, uh, you know, I see things in him, and he's a better father than I was uh, when I was young. And um, it really was hard. And um, to bear that burden of raising a family all on your own, you know, as men, we, we feel like we have to do it all. We can never be wrong. We always have to be strong, you know, never cry. Um, and it's a lot to take on. And so all that pressure came out in, you know, anger or um, not being as patient as I should have been. Um, but in lieu of all, of all of my failings early on, I have two, those two young men are great young men and I couldn't be prouder. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. Um, you can tell that there's something stirring in there and to be able to honor your adult kids in that way. Um, proud of you. Yeah, yeah. So Todd, uh, tell us a little bit about what are some of the spiritual lessons you learned from your dad? Wow, those are numerous. Um, yeah. Um, Pick probably, 10, I'm kidding. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> from a very young age, I remember um, very distinctly about Ugh. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, today, um, on Father's Day, is uh, the first Father's Day that Todd's dad is no longer with us here on earth. Sorry. And so that's a big deal. And it's okay. Yeah. Because are there other people here who t Ugh. this year is the first year that you've lost somebody and they're no longer with you this year? It's okay. Yeah, it taught me a lot. Um, probably one of the biggest ones though was about um, tithing and about um, giving of your time at church. Um, <laughs> if you knew my dad, 
He uh, did not like to be in front of people. He would never have done this ever in a million years. Um, but he'd be in the back patting anybody on, you know, to get you to go and do it and tell you good job when you were all done. Um, but, uh, but he was always in the background and he always taught us about tithing and about, you know, supporting your local church, um, being there for your family, you know, those kinds of values. Um, very much, um, and he was like the quiet guy. He always said you always speak more to people and, and uh, into their life by how you do things mm -hmm. than what you say. You know, you just, you're there for them in the background and you, you know, take care of people. And, and he yes. was always the one that did that. Like I, I, I remember distinctly he and my mom taking us kids and we went to go buy groceries and we just put them on the steps of this lady who was having a really hard time at church and rang the doorbell and left and she never did know it was us. Um, but he didn't want anybody to know. He just wanted to do it on the side. So I learned a lot from that. And then tithing, you know, giving, always giving 10%. He always taught, he always taught us if you ever want stuff to last a long time, you tithe. Because God will meet you there every single time. He'll make everything last longer. He'll make, you know, so we used to joke around about some of our cars lasting forever because, you know, I was like, Dad, it's time for a new car. I don't care. You know, it's, it's done. Let's get rid of this one. But, but because we tithe, it always lasted too long and it kept yeah. going. So, yeah, yeah. Lots, of, lots of lessons. You've yeah. prayed over some vehicles, right? We <laughs> yeah, pray absolutely. over our Dave Ramsey vehicles, like yeah. keep going. Yeah. <laughs> uh, talk a little bit about, do you remember practically when you were a young child, how did he teach you to tithe? Like, what was it? Like, are there some memories that you have that oh, you're yeah. like, this is kind of how I learned that this was a thing? Yep, yep. Just um, absolutely just asking, okay, so I know that you made such and such a money, you know, mowing the lawn from the neighbor, so where's, where's your tithe? Like, where's, where's that at as we were going to church? And like, well, Dad. And he's like, I'll, I'll loan you the money, but you're giving it to me when we get home. You know, <laughs> you got to tithe. You can't just keep that. That was goes first. Yeah. So, yeah. so it was just always, yeah. it was yep. consistent. No question about it. Yep. It just yeah. is something that you do. Yeah. 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 Isn't that amazing how sometimes we don't realize in the small moments how our kids are just picking up on that. Mm -hmm. They're picking up on our, our consistent uh, behavior and the things that we pay attention to and mm -hmm. that we value. Um, I'm glad that he passed that along yeah. to you. Yeah. Uh, Brian, you, you talked a little bit about how um, you walked away from God for how many years, would you say? About 10 years. About 10 years. And then you moved to North Dakota. That was part of that. Talk about... What was that like? What was your life like five, six, seven years ago? Yeah, so in 2012, I got married to a beautiful young lady. We had two little boys that you saw on the screen. Um, but we weren't doing life with Jesus. We were doing life on our own. Um, so a few short years later, um, the marriage ended. And then I did kind of what I didn't want to do. I ran out chasing money. So I thought, well, I got to make as much money as I can. Um, I've got to provide for my family and, and my dad, you know, your dad taught you how to tithe. My dad taught me to work hard, uh, make as much money as you can, provide for your family at, you know, all costs, make sure they're taken care of, um, which, which was great. But yeah, I, you know, I turned to things like partying and, and drinking and things like that. And, you know, I, I feel, felt like I had everything uh, monetarily, physically, but there was just something missing. And, uh, that thing was definitely, was definitely Jesus and the church family for sure. I missed it so much. I'm never leaving again. <laughs> and you guys, now God's calling him into pastoral ministry. Yes, absolutely. You. you know, God can take our life at any moment as he draws us back close and he has purpose for us. And I'm just so proud of you and, the, and what you. God's doing. It's amazing. It's amazing. Um, <clears throat> the, the five of us sat in a room a couple Sundays ago and we started to discuss, like, what do we want for today? And uh, Kyle shared a few stats. He was looking up some articles and shared a couple stats about dads and church and fathers and no. what that all looked like. And um, pretty quickly, the room filled with tears. And so we want to make sure to share that with all of you and let's just get into conversation about what that what that means so go ahead yeah uh, I guess if you're a guy and you're here or online or you're regularly um, getting your family to church way to go uh, yeah <laughs> unfortunately that is that is not the norm uh, lifeway research states that um, if the wife goes to church 
but uh, the husband does not, um, only one out of 50 children uh, will become a regular worshiper. And um, uh, in regards to the Father's Day, it is uh, the least attended holiday um, of, of all Sundays behind Labor Day, behind Mor Memorial Day, and even Fourth of July. And uh, that's a little bit interesting considering that Mother's Day is the third highest attended holiday behind Easter and Christmas. And I think there's a lot of different things that kind of play into that and maybe providing financially is one of them. But um, once again, if you're a guy and you got people here, um, thank you. Um, and I yeah. think what's really neat, when you shared that stat with us, I was like beaming with pride at Prairie Heights because I can look back at all of our attendance and, and truly Father's Day is not the least attended when we add up those. And so... Uh, we're better than the national average. Way to go, Prairie yeah. Hiders. Awesome job. Um, but I think to spur on this conversation and to continue, and you've got another stat yep. that you need to share, um, is like we want to lift each other up. We want to lift men up. We want to see and hear and speak the best uh, of what we see God wants for families and for men. And so this next one's a, a, a tougher one to settle in. Um, even as a, as a mom and as a female, it's hard to hear a little bit, but it's real. Uh, so dive into it and then let's. Yeah, LifeWay Research says that if the child is the first person to become a follower of Christ, uh, there is a 3.5% probability that the rest of the house will follow. If the wife is the first person to find Christ, there is a 17% chance that the rest of the household will follow. However, if the guy if the guy is the first person to become a Christian, there is a 93% chance that everyone in the house will follow. Guys, I don't, everybody. I, I think there is a significance to that stat. I think God created us to lead spiritually and kind of like I started the welcome, uh, and Beth said, I'm so thankful for the people in my life that have led and modeled this. And um, I think it's a really important as far as raising children and a family and uh, growing a legacy. Um, there's a lot of weight there. Yeah. So, Steve, what does that stir in you? Well, it stirs, honestly, well, that's a lot of pressure. <laughs> yeah. Um, but also, you know, we, we spend a majority of our lives stepping up. To, to take care of our family, either financially, uh, you know, teaching them how to be good students, good, good people, but we do that, if you do that in the absence of, of Christ, then it's, it, the burden falls strictly on you, which, so for me, the pressure of failure is that much greater. Whether I fail in my actions or I fail in my words, you know, the other day, uh, you know, I, I used some harsh words uh, to my son, CJ, and <clears throat> he responded uh, quite uh, adamantly. Uh, it surprised me with the words he used in response, but um, it's, <laughs> then fun what? it's funny now, <laughs> but it was kind of a, an eye-opener in the fact that I had just crushed his spirit by the words I used. And, um, and then, you know, reading, we're, we're studying James and Peter talking about humility, and, and as a father, it's hard to be humble because you have to be the strong one, right? And that's if, if I'm taking all that burden and not giving it to God. So uh, I, I didn't seek out guidance from God, but he sought me out. And it was a moment, and it just a spur of the moment. And I said, dude, I said, I'm sorry. I said, I love you. I didn't mean what I said, and you're not what I said you were. Uh, and immediately he told me he loved me, which I think I can count on my hands about five times because... You know, he's a dude. So, um, but that was, that was a moment when, when God talked to me, even though I did not seek him out. So yeah. that was pretty powerful. And, it's, and then it saved uh, probably a, a really significant moment, perhaps, in his life where he looked at me differently. And then that may have reflected on his in the future uh, on how he responds to his own children. Yeah. And talk a little bit more about you started there where you're saying uh, you feel this pressure and this pressure uh, can mount up and you maybe are scared of failure. And as a man, that's there anyway. And so that, without Jesus, 
and you lived a portion of your life walking that out without Jesus and then with Jesus, can you just talk for your own heart? Like, what is that like as a male who's, you've, you've experienced that. You've experienced trying to do all the things that everybody, society, family, all the, the life stuff without Jesus, but now you've got Jesus. It's, it's a significant difference. So all that pressure uh, kind of translates into anger and lack of patience. Mm -hmm. uh, but in the last two years of my journey back to Christ, uh, my patience has uh, increased tremendously. My empathy, looking at perspective of my children and my wife, uh, boy, uh, yeah, I got lucky on that, that one because she... Uh, the fact that she's still with me through, the, <laughs> through, through this journey is a testament to her strength. But um, yeah, it's, it's completely different. And Emily, my wife and I talked about this. I said, I asked her, because I needed affirmation, have, have I changed as a father in the last two years and as a husband? And she says, oh yes, you have. And mm -hmm. so um, the proof is there. Yeah. And you're not alone. You know, when you've got Jesus, then you're not alone on it. I heard, I heard you go, oh, yeah. There was something you went, oh, yeah, about. What was that? Just that I was, had a really good wife. <laughs> he said, oh, yeah. A, yeah. Yeah. Got lucky on that. Yeah. <laughs> got very lucky. Yeah. Yeah. So share a little bit about for you. What is that stat? What does that mean to you? And having grown up with that in a sense and lead that, leading that, talk about it. Yeah. I think, <clears throat> I guess what, what, when we were, we all got kind of emotional when he first gave us that, when he gave us that yeah. stat. And it was, um, when, it was in that moment when I, I really thought a lot about the generational side of it and feeling that, like that it made a difference in, in my life and then in, in my kids' lives. And, you know, so going back to my grandfather and I, I remember um, I was at my great uncle's funeral and they had a picture on the back and it was a picture of some, it literally was oxen or mule or something and they were pulling dirt out of the basement of the church that they built and they built that church and then that's where my parents went and my you know grandfather and so then Kelly and I were married there so just that that piece of it and not that I I mean I make it sound like it's idyllic I mean it wasn't but I mean it was it was a very generational thing and my family have all gone there all my cousins and my, one of my cousins is here today you know but it's just something that you grow up with and so yeah. it's it, you just feel very fortunate and I want to pass that on to my kids yeah. that feeling of um, we always knew that we had our family and we had a really big family besides, but we also had our church family and they were always there for us in all those hard times in life, yeah. you know, and how much and how important that was in our life. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it was huge. It was a, I mean, it is who I am. It, it made me who I am today. Yeah. Yeah. Very much. And I, again, go back to that story is so powerful. And I think the other thing we can take from it is it's never too late to start a legacy of generational faith you might be the one that starts the legacy that becomes the grandpa or the grandma that you're talking about today, mm -hmm. many, many years from now. And so today could be the day that you decide to start a legacy of generational faith that is gonna change people for years in your family tree. Mm -hmm because it has to start somewhere, right? right? Yeah. And then you can have people who now are sitting here saying, I am blessed by years and years and years of generational faith. Yes. Yeah. yeah. What, Brian, talk a little bit about stats or... Yeah. Yeah, that stat absolutely destroyed me in an amazing way and in a, in a sad way too. Um, in a good way where I felt just an affirmation of how I'm doing it with my boys. Um, if, if I don't, if I'm not the one to speak truth in the, into their life and over their life and pray for them, I don't know, maybe, maybe they won't get it at mom's, maybe a teacher will do it, maybe they won't, but um, that's a big responsibility we have as dads, as parents, um, to do that. And I just, first and foremost, I want my kids to know the reason for the hope that I have in Jesus. And, uh, and, and they do. I mean, I'm at supper last night, and they can't go anywhere without talking about Jesus. It's so cool. We're at supper last night, and a waitress walks up, and she's talking, and then, and then she goes away and knocks, looks at me and goes, Dad. I have a little Devo for us. I said, what's that? He's like, it's in my brain. I said, okay, what is it? He said, Jesus died on the cross for us, Dad. And as a dad, like, there's nothing more I want to hear my kids talking about. <laughs> so I'm just 
super happy about uh, making my way back to Jesus and that my kids love it and that this church family surrounds them and includes them and loves them. Generational faith. Look at you go. <laughs> I'm trying. <clears throat> yeah. We're never going to get it right. We're never going to get it perfect. What I hear in your story, though, too, is uh, Proverbs 22, 6. Do you have it memorized? Let's test him. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he'll never depart from it. I knew he had it memorized because he's that good. <laughs> good Say it one more time a little slower. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will never depart from it. So... Uh, did you say Knox said that Devo? Yeah. Yeah. Knox, Why did Knox say that Devo? It's because you're training up a child in the yeah, way we, he should. We do them every morning at the breakfast table. We read from a little book, uh, Devo for Boys, and, and uh, Nolan's old enough now. He's eight. He reads them to us. So it's just, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. And there's no right or wrong way to do that. And so uh, I just want to toss out, how do each of you do that? You talked about Devo's in the morning. How do you guys do that? How have you done it? How have you failed at trying things? And you're like, I tried this. It didn't work. I'm terrible at it. Okay. <laughs> Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, I think I, I, life happens and you get busy and you think, yeah. you know, not taking the time to do it. Sure. I think that's hard, you know. I think you'd, and as they're older, the, and the older they get, the more busy everybody gets. Yeah. You know, everybody's going different directions first thing in the morning and, or even later in the day. And yeah. you're probably not as terrible as you think, but go ahead. Well, yeah, <laughs> Todd's spot on. So trying to find time for Jesus and myself uh, is tough. And so, yeah, I'm not doing so well at that yeah. either. But uh, part of that, too, is, again, we're putting pressure on ourselves. Uh, but uh, a lot of that doesn't have to be words. It just has to be actions on the way you live your life and the way you, how I talk to my wife, how I treat my wife, um, how I treat other women. Um, and, I, you know, sh just living a life through Jesus' teaching and being respectful with words and actions, that in itself can be a daily devotional. Uh, and that takes no effort at all other than, you know, just trying to follow, the, follow Christ. Yeah, Steve, you hit the nail on the head, man. Nothing is more convincing than living how you say you believe. So that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm a little nervous, guys, f to be honest. As my kids grow up and they're in KidVenture, I'm like, they're going to share some stories of what happens in our home. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. We live it out the best we can, but we're just like all of you, right? Mm -hmm. It's like there are times where... I'm yelling at the kids, and that's why Ian's like, Dad's my favorite. And <laughs> <laughs> but that's real, and that is what they see. It's that consistency. It's the behavior, and it's how we treat people, and it's how we value people like Jesus did. And what else would you say about training up a child and knowing that even if they go away from the faith, that if you've trained them up, you can believe in God's promise that he's got them. God, that's a promise that God gives us, that they won't, they won't divert from the way that they've been trained up. And so I'll just add, um, if you were here yesterday, Beth talked a little bit about community. and Last uh, week. Last week. Yep. Yeah. yep. No one was here yesterday, but that's okay. Uh, I was here. <laughs> you were here yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> and I think there is power in church community. I have stood at the door long enough now to... Um, yeah, hear your guys' stories and get to know you, and I have seen the dads come in with their boys. I've seen the single moms bring their kids um, to know the stories where uh, the dad is no longer here, and, and I think that's where church community comes in. Um, I know there, it is a lot of pressure. We do put a lot on our shoulders to, um, you know, get this spiritually right, so to speak, but I think that's the power of church community, and that's what God intended our church community to be. Um, you know, yeah, we can, we've got the dads in Kid Venture, the guys in Kid Venture who are, are pouring into our kids. We've got uh, the people on stage. We've, got, we've just got a community of people, and um, I think together, if we buy into that, we can, we can, we can build up and raise our kids, and um, I can grow from Todd and Steve and Brian and they can grow from me, and um, together we can, we can kind of fill the needs in where, where maybe we have some gaps. 
Can you guys talk a little bit about um, the pressure of isolation? I don't know if it's pressure of isolation or just the tendency for, for men to isolate in their journey, to be alone in their journey, to not feel the need to want to reach out or, I don't know. Yeah, it seems the cultural norm is for us to, to bottle it up and take it on our shoulders and just get heavy shoulders and, and be strong and take it and be the men. But uh, uh, Jesus teaches us the opposite. You know, he, he wants us to have community. He did life with other people. We should do life with other people. Yeah. Um, we're so much stronger together than we are apart or isolated. And, and, you know, like we all know, the enemy can pick you off a lot easier if you're alone. If I'm surrounded by these good men right here, uh, the enemy is a lot less likely to pick me off. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably one of those lessons I didn't tell you before was my dad always taught me, you know, being in church and being involved in church, um, it, it keeps you closer to the Lord, but it also keeps everybody around you. And, you know, it's a lot, e like, like you just said, it's a lot easier for the devil to pick you off. I, I, I remember, um, you know, just different church fights, if you will. You know, you grow up in church, you've heard of a church fight. There's nothing better than a church fight. You've heard of that. <laughs> so true. And, uh, but he used to tell me that, you know, that's the devil's way to get into the church and to, you know, divide people and to get them to have their own opinion about things. And then, yeah. you know, you no longer have community together because now you're hurt or you're, you know, so yeah. people divide or whatever. And, mm -hmm. and he always said that that's the most important thing. Stay in church, stay active, stay involved. Mm -hmm. He was in the background, but he was there. Yeah. And, and it was a big lesson. Yeah. yeah. Keeping that central focus, Emily and I just had a discussion because we're, in today's society with technology, everybody, it's so easy to be isolated as a family. And well, so we have dinner together every night, that's, that's a rule. But after that, it's just like, Cassidy goes to her room, CJ goes downstairs, I go somewhere, Emily goes somewhere, and we're all isolated. The best thing that happened in the recent couple of weeks was the power outage. You lose, you lose Wi-Fi, and you saw all of a sudden, <laughs> it's like, oh, uh, we gotta talk about something. So, but making that concerted effort, and again, this is something, is one of my goals, is to make that concerted effort to gather as a family and talk about, and do a, a daily devotional, or just talk about what's going on and how God is influencing our lives. And I have to do that and be vulnerable um, which is tough. Mm -hmm. So, but that's us, uh, you know, in the Air Force, civil engineer. I was a civil engineer, and our mantra was lead change, lead the change. So, we as men need to lead the change, whether it be at work, at our household, um, whatever we do in our lives here at the church, we need to lead change. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> and I think the other thing with that is there is a perception that maybe being involved uh, with church or a perception that you would even protect your heart or protect your home from things like maybe porn or alcohol or any of these vices that um, are, we can all, we all have access to, uh, male, female, doesn't matter, no matter what age, um, but that the perception would be that you're weak or you're soft if you're like just driving after Jesus. <laughs> or that it's, it's not manly, it's not strong, it's not warrior-esque, that the cultural perception is like, oh, you can't go out on Friday night? Well, what the heck? You're not fun anymore. Or uh, you can't watch this certain thing or this certain show, or when Victoria's Secret commercials come on, you're gonna shut it off? Like, oh, are you pansy? I don't know, I don't know what guy's talking about. But I'm just trying to like, <laughs> I don't know. I'm, uh, I'm not as culturally relevant. <laughs> but talk about that a little bit, right? Am I wrong in that? Like, is that a perception? Is it hard to, to follow Jesus as a male and, and see it as like, that is the strongest, hardest journey you could ever go on is to be a fully devoted warrior male following Jesus. That is the hardest decision you could ever make to lead your family, to lead in the church, to stick with it when it gets hard. I mean, all the things. Go ahead, you guys take it from there. And like, what does that? Yeah, I do think that from a, even a, a business stand, standpoint, a corporate yeah. standpoint, there is a certain amount of pressure, um, you know, to not, um, 
not talk about your faith, not be able to, you know, live out your life the way you believe it, you know, yeah. where, the word I feel in my heart. And, and yeah, there is some pressure for that, you know, just even, um, corporate meetings and whatever, and all the drinking and all the, whatever that goes on. And I choose not to do that. And people that, you know, know that now about me and, and know, well, Troyer will go, but he's not going to have any drinks or, you know, whatever. Yeah. But, and that's you're still okay. fun. But you're still fun. And I still like, yeah, I'm still, yeah, probably yeah. crazier than most of them anyway. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah. you know, just trying to live out your life, but also, yeah, do it authentically, but also, yeah. yeah. But I do think that there's definitely that piece of it. You know, somebody will swear and they're like, oh, sorry, Todd. You know, and, <laughs> and it's, it's, like, like, it's, okay. it's like, it's okay. I've heard it. It's not, you know what I mean? <laughs> not that big a deal. Yeah. Yeah. And hear this, like, no judge, you know, there is zero judgment to maybe what might be going on in your life today. And, and yeah. uh, you know, uh, I, I came from a life of a lot of partying and a lot of stuff. And you had a season of life where, yeah, we were just doing a bunch of stuff that was uh, not what God will want for us. Um, and just health-wise, you know. Um, but what else? Uh, yeah, a big thing for me what was tough uh, was losing some certain friends that I thought were really good friends. Mm -hmm. um, I lost some, and then some came back when they noticed the change was genuine. Um, and then I gained a lot more, you know, good quality friends here at church, too. Um, you know, I decided a long time ago, about over three years ago, three and a half years now, uh, to quit drinking. Because if I'm going to tell my boys or, you know, try to get them to not drink or party, I can't be going out and doing that either. I got to model that for them because they have to see it through me, you know. Yeah, that's as I was grilling for Father's Day yesterday. I just realized this through your discussion. I was the only one in the household having a couple of Coors Lights, which is my you know jam when I'm grilling. But but Eric over there and he doesn't drink um, once in a while maybe. But you know I thought about that. You know he's even an adult male and I'm and I'm doing this and then I have a 15 year old child or teenager that's watching me do this. I'm not you know it's only a, and, and in my mind I'm saying it's only two. But what, you know, what is CJ thinking? Well, it's only two. Well, God, those are the words I don't want him to say uh, when he's out with friends. Ah, it's only two. It should be zero. But he's, he's seeing that through my actions. So, um, yeah. Yeah, and then there's certain things that'll be, you know, not okay for me to do, but it'll be okay for Kyle to do. Um, yeah. And things like that. You know, there's obviously you'll get some conviction like you did, Steve, with that. And I did too. So obviously, you know, we'll lean into that. But. That's where we need, you know, I need a brother like you that says, hey, man, I quit drinking. And, you know, what's up with that? You know, you could say something like that or challenge me to do that. But that's what we have to do as men is challenge each other and say, okay, it's, it's manly to not drink. It's, it's um, more manly not to drink than it is to drink. Uh, those kinds of attitude changes that, can, that you need to start that generational pattern, right? I'm still fun. Look at me. <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> Were you going to say something? I, I was just going to add to it. My, I, my dad would have said to me growing up, he always said, he's like, Todd, you just never want to do something that might lead somebody astray or lead them down a path that you don't know who, who can handle and who would, you know, take one beer and never bother them and who's going to become an alcoholic. So whatever you do, don't ever do something that could possibly lead somebody astray. And so watch your, you know, watch your actions very, very carefully. It made me think of that when you said that about even kids watch and you don't realize what they're watching and how much they watch and observe. Oh, yeah, um, and, and, you do. yeah, and Emily's, uh, um, uh, CJ's adopted, I adopted, I was blessed to adopt him when he was two or three years old, um, but his, his biological father has issues that involve alcoholism that I don't remember all the time because when I see him, he's my son, and because he asked me, came home from school and said, Dad, what color are your eyes? And I'm like, why? Because we learned about genetics, and I said, well, mine are hazel. She go, he goes, well, that doesn't make any sense. I said, right, because you're adopted. <laughs> so, but I almost started crying right there because in that moment, he forgot I was not his biological father, and I forgot he was not my, and we, that happens all the yeah. time. But anyway, so, yeah. but that's a fear and of my wife is that, that he is pretty, you know, has some disposition to go in that direction. So it's my role now to make sure I provide a model that he, he can follow. Yeah. Our role. Our. Our role. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And I think so, that's yeah. exactly, it just, Good it point. connects right yeah. to the power of being part of a church family and the power of um, 
All of the kids here are all of our kids. We are responsible spiritually to mother and to father, all of the kids, all ages, here in our church. And it is our responsibility to do that. And that's an exact example. Go ahead. You. Nope. Well, that, that, that just takes, you know, the I and the my, which is always in my vocabulary. And thank you, Kyle, for that, because I don't have to, it doesn't have to be my. <clears throat> yep. Yeah. And, and my vision is like, yeah, that all, all the men, specifically fathers, they were talking about men. I want this for women too and kids and teens and all that. But on Sundays and other uh, girl groups and other spaces where prairie hiders are gathering, that it is filled with fun. And it's, and it's like, yeah, I can't wait for Sunday till I get to go do this, or I can't wait till Wednesday night till I get to go do this, and, and that there is this energy around it, and that our kids see that we're most excited about the things that matter most. And um, I know my kids are going to need to see that from far beyond just Kyle and I. And uh, Kyle, talk a little bit about, um, uh, there's another verse we could hit in Ephesians for sure. Otherwise, talk a little bit more about um, just what that perception and when you think about warrior men, what do you think about? Hmm. Honestly, it's been flipped upside down from what it was to what it is now. Um, and I guess I have, have you know, generational faith. Um, I, I would say I have my, my dad to thank for that, um, a story that I remember that has stuck with me and it's been super, super powerful. Um, I think I was in high school, my brother and I were in high school and my dad had been reading in the Bible and he, the whole, uh, God had convicted something in him from what he read. Um, it was a story of the Bible where a father had blessed his sons and he asked, he, he brought us down and he said, um, I, I would love to bless you and like, I could see it written on his face that this was um, a very, um, important moment in his life and yeah he had us kneel down and he, he prayed a blessing over us and I don't remember the words but the spiritual significance of the moment has uh, has stuck with me and yeah when I think about leading and being a spiritual warrior um, yeah that's it left to my own vices um, I wouldn't be up here today um, left to my own vices I, I probably wouldn't be serving in a church, um, uh, but that's, that's what real leadership in my mind looks like. Yeah, it's a, <clears throat> I hear you saying it's a servant on your knees right. leadership. Yep. It's, it's not, it's not, uh, it's this kind of leadership Jesus showed us. Uh, it's not about us, we'll lay down our life. and. Um, yeah, and so we just get really excited about continuing to spur men on, continuing to build up and encourage. And so my hope, our hope for today is that you got to hear bits and pieces of stories that are just real and authentic. <laughs> Uh, there's nothing super special, no offense to any of us here on the stage. <laughs> What's super special is that we are committed. We are committed to driving after Jesus. We are committed to being devoted to Jesus and doing it together um, as a church family. And so thank you so much uh, to the three of these amazing men for sharing your stories. Incredible, let's give them a round of applause. <clears throat> and Prairie Heights men, the challenge that we have for you. Uh, Kyle, you wanna go ahead and share that with them? Do you want me to? Go ahead. I got it, yeah. okay. <laughs> So what we want you to do today, watch it online here in the room, text PHMEN to 75787. Do it right now. You're not signing up for anything. All that happens is you're going to get a message back from Kyle. Uh, he's already written the message. You're going to get a text message back. And then over the next five weeks, you're going to get a specific message back from, a uh, specific message from Kyle the next five weeks. So Pray Heights Men, you can get an encouragement. It's going to be a, a scriptural encouragement and a story just to lift you up. So super simple. All you have to do, all you have to do is text PHMEN to 75787. That's it. And you don't have to respond um, other than just to get into that group to receive those 
emails and those encouragements. And why do we want to do that? It's because we want to lift up and encourage men here at Prairie Heights. And we want you to be everything that God has called you to be. We don't want you to stop short because of uh, anything. And we want to be in it together. And so that's why. Um, so as we close, can we all stand up? Let's stand up and um, we're going to kind of pray together. And <clears throat> go ahead and stand. Yep. And wherever you're watching from, go ahead and stand. And um, we just pray that today is all for God's glory. And uh, so I'm going to pray. And then, uh, Todd, would you pray after I'm done and close us out? Okay. Uh, Jesus, I thank you for uh, the warriors that are standing beside me. I thank you, God, for Brian and his life, Todd and his life, Steve and his life, Kyle and his life. I thank you, God, for all the men that are here in this room that are watching online. I thank you, God, that they are a son of yours first, that before any other responsibility, before any other uh, thing in their life, they are a son of yours. And God, I pray that we are continuing to, all of us, regardless of, of gender or age or stage of life or ethnicity, that God, we would strive after you. We would be fully dependent on you, God that we would trust you with all of who we are. And God, we praise you for today and what you're doing in our midst. And Lord, I just ask right now that you just give all of the fathers that are here and listening online, Lord, give them a great day with their children. Lord, just give us a, a fantastic time and, and where we honor them and, and we appreciate them. Lord, I ask that you just give us a great rest of our day. Thank you for the rain. Thank you for... Um, just all that you're doing in our lives. Lord, let us continue to look to you for our guidance as our true heavenly father. And uh, just give us a great day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.